good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever you may be listening, and welcome to Latitude, the 43 North podcast. I'm your host, Director of Content here at 43 North, Nate Benson, and we've got a fantastic show for you this week. We've got John Hill, VP of Network at Techstars, joining us on the podcast. And this week, we're talking about the importance of networking, especially in emerging startup ecosystems like the one here in Buffalo. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this great episode of Latitude. John, how are you today? Doing pretty well. Happy to be in Buffalo. Thanks for coming. Uh, so uh, all the way from Bo- via Boston. So thank you for uh, flying in today. Um, what brings you to Buffalo? Yeah, uh, via Boston is kind of a misnomer. It's right, it's yeah. kind of home. I live on a plane. It's home for now. Yeah. So I'm um, coming up to uh, see what's happening with 43 North and what's happening in the entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem in Buffalo. Um, I am the VP of network for Techstars, and my role is to cross connect the relational network at Techstars on and offline. And how you do that is actually understanding the ecosystems that are out there and what it looks like on the ground as an entrepreneur in, say, a place like Buffalo. So it's one of the reasons I'm here right now. What was the journey up to Techstars? What gives a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are now? Yeah, so um, nonlinear path. I I actually started as a journalist, uh, studied history in college. My dad said I was allergic to money. (laughs) And uh, I uh, ended up uh, editor for a national sports magazine in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, called Athlon Sports. The preseason annuals for college pro football, college pro basketball, baseball, golf. Uh, and um, then I ended up in uh, kind of selling my soul uh, and, and swapping to the market development side of the fence, work for Gannett and the newspapers in the state of Michigan, um, market development, market research, partnerships, promotions, business development. I uh, ended up in career services at Michigan State University, uh, eventually the director of alumni career services. I was there when the recession hit and the automotive industry literally drove off, drove off a cliff. Uh, and utilize social networks as a way to kind of support people who are looking for jobs. We had 240,000 alumni in the state of Michigan, pretty much everybody tied to the automotive sure. industry. And so I help people understand how to build networks effectively going forward. So build a network before you need it so it's there when you do. And how to build quality networks that you could leverage to create opportunity. So university affiliation being one of those quality networks. I um, started using this little tool called LinkedIn quite a bit yeah, and uh, became well known as kind of the person in the higher ed market who could do link- LinkedIn presentations, uh, figured out how to tie it back to time, talent and treasure on campus. And uh, LinkedIn started showing up at my presentations, ended up negotiating the first partnership between uh, a university and LinkedIn, sucked through the looking glass and implementation and became the higher education evangelist for LinkedIn. It was infused in a product team there. We built five pr- products that reached about 85 million people. Mapped Small out, number. Yeah, mapped out longitudinal career data for uh, 24,000 universities globally. And uh, I ended up speaking at 187 universities and 110 conferences in higher education over three and a half years. Then I got recruited into Techstars to build their alumni association. So our founders were going through a 10, 12-week program, surrounded with mentors and investors, spinning out in the world. Didn't have support afterwards. So... Mm-hmm. Five years ago, I joined Techstars, and they asked me to create that support structure so that we could expedite success through relational capital of our founders for funding, hiring, biz dev, corp dev connections, things like that. So from journal- sports journalism to networking, crazy. that's a that's a leap. Yeah, it's a cra- cra- <laughs> crazy ride, and I, I couldn't um, – I don't know if I could help anybody else navigate how this all happened. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a part of it was – uh, I was very entrepreneurial in my approach to things. Mm-hmm. I would say it was a, a serial entrepreneur, and I, I would break things heavily uh, in corporate structures, probably still do it at Techstars. <laughs> and, uh, but because of that, I ended up doing some really unique things along the way, and uh, it just m- kind of propelled me into the next opportunity, next op- opportunity, and I was never afraid to take a risk. Uh, so, for instance, in the last eight years, uh, I've moved my whole family from Michigan to San Francisco and then from San Francisco to Boston, and very little safety net other than a job sure. uh, in, in each of those experiences. But, uh, you know, I, I'm a big believer in hustle, and one of the reasons I like being around entrepreneurs is I think they're the best hustlers in the world, and uh, I want to support people who jump off cliffs, and I get to do that with entrepreneurs as well. It's a win-win scenario. You know, you mentioned earlier 187 colleges you you, you visited. That's almost two a week for two years, right? Yeah, it was crazy. That's that's good. a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles. Yes, definitely. So the last year I was at LinkedIn, I did uh, 360,000 miles in the air. And I, I think all told I ended up speaking in 30 or 31 countries, um, which, you know, looking back is amazing. While I was doing it, 
you're just on the flywheel. You don't even really think about it. And I, I got into LinkedIn relatively early. And when I left, there were 7,000 employees. And so I got to watch the steep curve mm -hmm. of growth at LinkedIn as well, which was pretty amazing. What was it about networking? You know, and, and you, I know you mentioned you kind of stumbled into it, but what was it that was appealing, you know, kind of bringing people together? Yeah. So um, the, the, I'll talk about it from a couple different fronts. One, um, I think one of the amazing things for me is to witness two really good people uh, that I know connecting together and creating opportunities for each other. And uh, I don't want anything from that. It's just like, I guess, karmic value. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty cool to, to witness. Um, but secondly, like the more that I've done that, and I've been, I've kind of been known as the guy who can get you things for a long time, kind of like Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank yeah, yeah. Redemption, yeah. right? And uh, the more that I've done it, um, the more that the people in my network are excited to connect with the people that I'm going to connect them with because they think that I can vet that out really easily and I must, must be connecting them to good people. So it's almost an expectation. Sure. And then if I don't reach out to people for a while, they'll actually reach out to me and say, hey, is there anybody you can connect me with? And I uh, almost like I'm neglecting them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it becomes expectation. Um, I just I love putting good people together and seeing the good stuff that happens out of that. And uh, and again, like I get to travel around the world and the more good people I see around the world, the more I can figure out how to connect those ecosystems and people together. And Techstars is the vehicle to do that, which is just amazing. So you do a lot of traveling uh, as, as VP of network for, for Techstars. Uh, you probably travel to a lot of cities similar to Buffalo, this post-industrial city now trying to find its foothold in the 21st century, right? Um, what are some of the kind of overlapping challenges that these cities are facing that you're seeing? And how does, you know, your role in, in kind of bringing people together help kind of bridge some of those gaps? Yeah, so I, I, I'm, and you're right, I get to see this kind of play out all, all over the world. Um, when I was at Michigan State University, I was in Lansing, Michigan. If you think about that, that's about as industrial of a city as yeah. you can think of. And when the recession hit, um, automotive was in a really tough state. Uh, and the state government was, you know, all, all of their um, abilities were tied to the automotive industry. And so really the two people who were shaping wind were both going in the same direction. And I was part of a group that wanted to reshape wind and take it into a different direction and support entrepreneurship and innovation and things outside of automotive and things outside government control. And so we started to do these initiatives where we would take our social networks and if somebody was trying to do something innovative, we would support through all our social networks those their good works. And the idea was just to like open up doors for people. Um, but our little group that started in Lansing that we're doing that connected with groups in Ann Arbor and Grand Rapids and Detroit. And before we know it, like a decade ago, we were the first group to bring the, a TEDx to the state of Michigan. And I was one of the first speakers at the first TEDx at the state of Michigan, which is surreal. Mm -hmm. And then we brought the first Ignite and the first Startup Weekend. Um, we ended up um, doing a program with the state of Michigan called Michigan, where we tried to attract talent outside the state of Michigan back to the state of Michigan. We actually did a roadshow with Google and Quicken Loans and University of Michigan and Michigan State University and the, and the state government, where we would go into a place like Austin or Boston, sure. and we'd invite all the alumni from the state universities that were in STEM to it. And we would try to invite them back to the state for high-paying, high-profile jobs, for reinvestment, mm -hmm. for um, uh, entrepreneurship activities. What kind of success rate did you have with that? I, I know it's a little you know, that, right Yeah, now. no, I, I, I mean, I, I think the bigger thing was um, helping those people understand that Michigan was open for business, right. to leverage their networks, to showcase that things were open for business. Because we once doing you leave an outreach. area, it's similar to Buffalo, once you leave, you kind of forget, like, it is open for business, right? Yeah, and, well, and those are the people who actually cared about Michigan. Yeah. Right. And we knew that. And so what we were trying to do is, at a minimum, help them help us get people, you know, utilize them to get people back to the state of Michigan or at least try to attract talent back to the state of Michigan. But I, I, I saw that in Lansing a decade ago. Um, I was part I brought a, a, our large scale event called FounderCon at Techstars, which brings founders, mentors, investors together. We did it in Cincinnati um, three years ago. And we did that because Cincinnati was a place to prove that entrepreneurship could be successful anywhere. And I said, why not? Like, I'm going to try this out. And then if it crashed and burned, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> Fortunately, it didn't. And uh, it went really well. Um, we have a program in Indianapolis now. And uh, it's focused on sports technology, which I absolutely love. Um, and, uh, you know, we're in Kansas City. We're in Minneapolis. We have a program in Detroit, which for me becomes full circle. 
Um, so there's a Techstars accelerator in the place where we spurred innovation a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And again, like I look at Buffalo as example of all of those kind of successes that can be and are already happening. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just about kind of chronicling what these networks look like, what it looks like here, and then figuring out how to plug it into some of the other initiatives that, you know, I'm doing or Techstars is doing. You know, certainly Buffalo is kind of still in its infancy of developing, you know, the ecosystem and the community, you know, and you know, folks I talk to at some networking events, you know, they just will often say, you know, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what I can provide. And, you know, what are your thoughts on like just like you said, getting people, connecting people, yeah. like the, the importance of that network, like you don't necessarily know that impact just introducing someone could have, right? Yeah. So I think people um, put a lot of weight into connectivity. Like, what do I do? Um, what's the formal process or whatever? Um, and, you know, I don't worry about it. I, I try to, if somebody's looking for advice, I try to find the best person for that person to talk to that I think will give them good advice. If somebody's looking for a mentor, I try to find them somebody who's subject specific who can provide mentorship. Uh, if somebody's looking for talent, I try to connect them to good people who either they may be interested in a job or they know somebody who's interested in a job. All that resides in Buffalo, right? Yeah. If we're trying to start a company here. And really, founders need three big things they need help with funding. They need help with hiring, and they need help connecting with business development or corporate development opportunities for proof of concept, like my company is real, you yeah. know, or we just having the, thing. yeah, you know, like at least having the doors open. Right? As a community, um, Buffalo can coalesce around those things to be supportive of entrepreneurship uh, because a lot of times, like, that word isn't associated with a human being, but being an entrepreneur is really lonely, yeah. and it's really difficult, and you tie those two things together, um, you can have a supportive region that celebrates that experience or one that doesn't. And you know, generally, if it doesn't, that person will have to find somewhere else to be because they have to find other people like themselves. You know, we're seeing more people, you know, found companies in Buffalo. We're seeing, you know, more than ever money coming into Buffalo from outside venture capitalists. But, you know, that third thing you mentioned, that corporate, you know, uh, involvement in the startup uh ecosystem is still in its infancy you know what's your advice to you know those corporates out there who you know it's trendy to say oh you know we're helping entrepreneurs but how do you actually help yeah. founders right so the, the really interesting thing is you know if you look at the early stage entrepreneurs they're really not good at process and procedure no you know and they have understanding in specific things so like they may be really good engineers but they have no idea how to market or they have no idea how to hire or whatever whatever the other verticals are in, in an umbrella as an established professional in the corporate environment here, my guess is that you understand how to hire. You understand how to track things, how to do set KPIs, um, how to um, you know path things forward for company success, how to be part of a greater team. Those are all really valuable learnings that could be applied to an entrepreneur. Now, the entrepreneur gives you something in return. They give you what it's like to be an ideator, right? Mm -hmm. how, how to connect into innovation, right? That spins off into things like R&D, right? That keeps you up on trends because you're seeing, you know, at, at the, the primordial ooze stage, sure. something developing and moving forward, which is really cool. You know, as, as things continue to uh, mature here in Buffalo, you know, what are some of the next steps for an emerging kind of, entrepreneurial ecosystem now like i said now as money's coming in people are hiring there's a little bit of traction how do you keep that momentum going yeah so um when we were in the state of michigan a decade ago there was this buzzword about retention and trying to sure. retain talent and i something hit home with me on a university student that i was talking on, uh, to who was a senior graduating and they were going to leave and they said you know when you use that word retention it feels like you're trying to capture me right. i should want to be here or if i'm not here you should have ways to connect back to me and so you have all of these people who have graduated from, say, um, University of Buffalo or um, Canisius or, you know, who were born and grew up in Buffalo and have moved elsewhere. They're still Buffalo, right? And so I think the next approach is, like, cultivate the local ecosystem, but also cultivate the relationships out of the local ecosystem um, as conduits for success for people in Buffalo, right? So connect with your folks and build the ties into San Francisco, um, for innovation or tech talent. Connect with the ties into New York for um, connection into investment. 
right? And you can build all those networks externally, but it's thinking a little bit different as um, a city, um, not isolated or not us against another city in upstate New York. It's us and how do we take what we do local, global, and then how do we take global, local, right? And actually map that out. And, um, and I think like a lot of cities, it, it's tough to think beyond just the city limits. Right and actually extend to the resources you have globally and, and, and allow those to help you help yourself. You know, what, I read a great blog post from you as I was doing research uh, to chat today. You know, you kind of mapped out your 30 days on the road for Techstars. Mm-hmm. And, you know, kudos to you for sitting in airports that long because I, could, I couldn't do it. Um, but you travel a lot, obviously. What are some of the, the trends you're seeing for communities like Buffalo that, you know, we need to be on the lookout for moving forward. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that um, it's, I think one of the things that I'm seeing that successful communities are doing is they're coalescing all of the levers that can create support together. Um, and I'll give you a perfect example. I think the the best place on earth right now to witness kind of where entrepreneurialism is at its kind of hottest stage is Berlin. And I, and it's partly because um, the there's like a free uh, ability, like visas for talent are relatively easy to get. So sure. it's easy to migrate talent in and out. It's transient population coming in and out. Um, historically, their school systems, their their pathing for uh, secondary school, um, your career was set at about 13, and then they trended you through that, and you didn't really deviate from the path entrepreneurialism obviously doesn't play that game, right? right? And so they've opened up the door to be a little bit more innovative and pathing from a university perspective. Because of things like Brexit, um, Germany is becoming a power center for venture. And so you're having more and more funding coalesce. Um, The corporates are now coalescing in Berlin pretty heavily and supporting that. And then the government is supporting the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And so, you know, my recommendation when I look at something like that is for cities like Buffalo to align all these pieces together and work as a team instead of against each other and, you know, be supportive in that approach. And if a city the size of Berlin can do it, yeah, Buffalo certainly can. So uh, shutting our borders out to folks uh, probably isn't the <laughs> best strategy on a federal level. Yeah. So um, that's a whole different podcast. Yeah. That would, that would, yeah. Well, let's not walk into that direction. <laughs> um, I know you got to catch a flight. So, you know, wrapping, wrapping things up, you know, I, I go back to the, you know, w- what are some of your recommendations for folks who, who want to get involved in, in how to do so? And, you know, how do you break down kind of that mental barrier of just like, oh, I just don't know. And like, I don't, you know, I don't have the time, even though it takes five minutes. Like, what do I do? You know? Yeah. Are you talking about supporting entrepreneurs? Yeah. yeah support it in, or, or just getting involved in the community. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I was telling you earlier, um, when I worked in the state of Michigan, we brought the TEDx yeah. and um, Ignite, Startup Week, and things like that. Um, that wasn't my full time job, right? That was all as an aside. I, you know, I was on the governor's council for retention and recruitment of talent. I testified in front of the House of Representatives on how to utilize social media to attract talent back to the state of Michigan. Um, we did really cool programming with Dan Gilbert um, called Live Work Detroit. We bust students in from all the universities in the state of Michigan, graduating seniors, to the city of Detroit and showed them where they could live, where they could work, where they could play over 12 hours. And like Dan Gilbert offered them all a job at the end of it type thing. It was like a little bit surreal. The reason I'm telling you all this is I'm not anybody special. I I was willing to put in the time to support uh, people and help them out uh, along the way. Um, Literally, an introduction or support or advice will go in aggregate a long way. And, you know, the more people who will do that in the city and be open to, you know, working with these crazy entrepreneurial folks – um, you know, the, the more it becomes like rising tides. And, you know, at some point, the community starts to celebrate it at a high level. And they realize, like, it's part of the fabric of what is here. And I think that it revitalizes places like Buffalo or Indianapolis or Columbus or Cincinnati or Lansing, Michigan you know, or Detroit in a way that um, it would be hard-pressed to do through, say, manufacturing or you know, in, in traditional industrial pursuits. And, um, you know, there's no reason that the next big company can't come out of a place like Buffalo. 
but you have to be supportive of it to, to do so. Well, John, thank you very much for, for your time today. Uh, fortunately for you, the Buffalo Airport's uh, relatively not busy right <laughs> now, so you should be good uh, good to go. Thank you for your time. And if, if folks want to connect and network with you, how can they do so? Yeah, I'm uh, likely the easiest person to find. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, john.hill at techstars.com. I don't mind giving out that email address at all. Um, feel free if you want to talk about anything and connect uh, in that vein. Uh, happy to be of help. Um, I'll likely be back in the region again at some point. I have a son going to Michigan State. I live in Boston, so we drive through here at least three times a year. <laughs> so I'm sure we can piggyback some things on as we go along. And uh, you know, I'm also at TechStarsJohn on Twitter. And DMing me is a good way to try to connect and go from there. And I'm happy to carry a conversation beyond this. Fantastic. Thank you for your time today. Cheers. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. I want to thank John for joining us on the podcast this week. Make sure you head on over to LinkedIn or any other social media platform and find John. He's a fantastic resource. And like he said in the podcast, make sure you connect with him so he can connect you with someone you may need for your startup. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Latitude. Make sure you're following 43 North on social media and make sure you head on over to Apple iTunes and leave a five-star review of this show. The more five-star reviews we have, the more people who will see this show, and that's what we want. Thank you again for listening. For 43 North, I'm Nate Benson, and we'll see you with the next one.